Welcome to Jersey Reads the Classics, an audiobook podcast delving into the finest works of our literary masters. Unfortunately, it's read by this woman. What the hell? Who cares? Let's go on an adventure. Hello, and welcome to the premiere episode of Jersey Reads the Classics. But Jersey Reads the Classics as a video kind of podcast. Do we call that a vlogcast? I don't know. Point is, Jersey Reads the Classics is an audiobook podcast that obviously I'm podcasting. And I decided, because people tell me I'm so animated, that I'm going to read the book aloud to you video form. Now, it might be a little different than the podcast, because the podcast, I'm sitting in a little cramped closet, speaking into the microphone, then coming up with thoughts and stuff. This is going to be a little bit more freestyling. Like, I'm going to read, and then I'm going to look up at you, and then maybe give you some thoughts whilst I'm reading. Um... Also, a little bit about me. I'm from Jersey. Everybody tells me like to hear my accent. So I'm like, hmm, what could I do? And I was like, I can read to people because I've read to kids for four years. And kids kind of like my vibe, but I think, you know, adults will like my vibe too. Because you know what? I'm sassy and I'm a little crass. This is not for kids. This version is not for kids. I'm taking a classic book because I don't have to pay to read it. And I don't have to worry about all that crap with the copyright laws. And the first book I decided to choose to read, because now I can just go on tangents we don't need to do that the first book i decided to read is alice's adventures in wonderland by lewis carroll and i chose this one because you know what i have a very childlike spirit and i think we all do and i think so many of us are just not tapping into that childlike energy and i was like this is a great book because hey remember so many adults write these children's books just like cartoons and shit and there's always adult themes in them. So imagine hearing this book or reading it from an adult's perspective. I also want you to know, I did not read the classics as a kid. It's not like I grew up in a cave. I just read Judy Bloom. That was kind of my jam, you know, Judy Bloom. So with no further ado, welcome to Jersey Reads the Classics, starring your host, or hostess with the mostest, I'm not gonna lie, Rosie DeCandia. So let's begin. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll, Chapter One, Down the Rabbit Hole. Alice was beginning to get very tired of sitting by her sister on the bank and of having nothing to do. Once or twice she had peeped into the book her sister was reading, but it had no pictures or conversations in it. And what is the use of a book, thought Alice, without pictures or conversations? So, she was considering in her own mind as well as she could, for the hot day made her feel very sleepy and stupid. I don't need any of the heat to make me sleepy and stupid. They're just days, especially that I'm going through perimenopause, I feel very sleepy and very much stupid. But moving forward. Whether the pleasure of making a daisy chain would be worth the trouble of getting up and picking the daisies, when suddenly a white rabbit with pink eyes ran close by her. There was nothing so very remarkable in that. Nor did Alice think it to think it so very much out of the way to hear the rabbit say to itself, Oh dear, oh dear, I shall be too late. Mm. You know, when she thought it over afterwards, it occurred to her that she ought to have wondered at this time. But at the time, it all seemed quite natural. Oh yeah, Alice, it's really natural to hear a bunny talking. Yeah, what the hell, man? She's definitely tripping on something. But when the rabbit actually took a watch out of its waistcoat pocket and looked at it and then hurried on, Alice started to her feet, for it flashed across her mind that she had never before seen a rabbit with either a waistcoat pocket or a watch to take out of it and burning with curiosity. Yes, curiosity killed the cat, but you know what? Satisfaction brought it back. Ha ha ha. She ran across the field after it and fortunately was just in time to see it pop down a large rabbit hole under the hedge. In another moment, down went Alice after it, never once considering how in the world she was to get out again. Yes, let's just divert a little bit. Uh, Alice is a child and currently her frontal lobe is not developed. That is the place of where consequences are made. And just so you know, an FYI, 
scientifically speaking, your frontal lobe is not developed until you're around 26, 27. So remember all that stupid shit you used to do, not only as a kid, but in your early 20s. Let's not talk about that. Thank God there was not social media in my day when I was at Rutgers University. It would not have been pretty. Point is this. Her frontal lobe is not developed. So, of course, she is jumping in feet first. She don't give a shit because you know what? She don't know the consequences. Of course, she don't know how she's getting back out. But she don't care and neither do we because we are going down the rabbit hole. Also down the rabbit hole. You know what that is. You know when you say I'm going, I've gone down the rabbit hole. You go to Wikipedia. You go down somewhere and you look up one thing and two hours later, you've just garnered a shitload of information that you're never going to need again. But you're just like, oh my God, I went down a rabbit hole. Believe it or not, it actually is from down the rabbit hole. So Lewis Carroll, I know you wrote this in, I don't know, 1885, whenever. You never thought that down the rabbit hole would be the legacy. That is the legacy really you gave us. Well, besides the fact that perhaps Alice is on a trip. But I digress and let's get back to the book. <clears throat> the rabbit hole went straight on like a tunnel for some way and then dipped suddenly down, so suddenly that Alice had not a moment to think about stopping herself before she found herself falling down a very deep well. Either the well was very deep or she fell very slowly for she had plenty of time as she went down to look about her and to wonder what was going to happen next. First, she tried to look down and make out what she was coming to, but it was too dark to see anything. Then she looked at the sides of the well and noticed that they were filled with cupboards and bookshelves. Here and there she saw maps and pictures hung upon pegs. She took down a jar from one of the shelves as she passed it. It was labeled Orange Marmalade. Oh my God, I love Orange Marmalade. I never liked it as a kid, but you know your taste buds change over time. There are lots of shit I didn't like as a kid, and now I love. But orange marmalade, mm, I could go for that on Thomas's English muffin with a little bit of butter. Only I don't eat those things anymore, but I do like orange marmalade. <clears throat> but to her great disappointment, it was empty. She did not like to drop the jar for fear of killing somebody, so managed to put it into one of the cupboards as she fell past it. Ah, Alice is very thoughtful. I mean, she could have just tossed that jar aside and been like, okay, it's empty, and not thought about something. So Alice, I like it. You're considerate. Mm -mm. Well thought Alice to herself. After such a fall as this, I shall think nothing of tumbling downstairs. How brave they'll all think me at home. Why, I wouldn't say anything about it, even if I fell off the top of the house, which was very likely true. Down, down, down. Would the fall never come to an end? I wonder how many miles I've fallen by this time, she said aloud. I must be getting somewhere near the center of the earth. Let me see. That would be 4,000 miles down, I think. For you see, Alice had learned several things of this sort in her lesson in the schoolroom. And though this was not a very good opportunity for showing off her knowledge, as there was no one to listen to her, still, it was good practice to say it over. Yes, that's about the right distance. But then I wonder what latitude or longitude I've got to. Alice, I don't know anything about latitude and longitude. I remember when studying that I think at 12 years old but please I didn't even know she's going down 4,000 whatever and I have no idea but let's go back Alice had no idea what latitude was or longitude either me neither but thought they were nice grand words to say I'm impressed Alice oh here's a picture if you want to see because remember how we said here's a picture of her falling down the rabbit hole okay presently she began again I wonder if I shall fall right through the earth how funny it'll seem to come out among the people that walk with their heads downwards. The antipathies, I think. She was rather glad there was no one listening this time, as it didn't sound at all the right word. But I shall have to ask them what the name of the country is. You know, please, ma'am, is this New Zealand or Australia? And she tried to curtsy as she spoke. Fancy curtsying as you're falling through the air. Do you think you could manage it? And what an ignorant little girl she'll think me for asking. No, it'll never do to ask. Perhaps I shall see it written up somewhere. Down, down, down. There was nothing else to do. So Alice soon began talking again. Dinah will miss me very much tonight, I should think. Dinah was the cat. I hope they'll remember her source of milk at tea time. Dinah, my dear. I wish you were down here with me. There were no mice in the air, I'm afraid. But you might catch a bat, and that's very like a mouse, you know. But do cats eat bats, I wonder? And here Alice began to get rather sleepy. 
and went on saying to herself in a dreamy sort of way, do cats eat bats? Do cats eat bats? And sometimes, do bats eat cats? For you see, as she couldn't answer either question, it didn't much matter which way she put it. She felt that she was dozing off and had just begun to dream that she was walking hands in hands with Dinah and saying to her very earnestly, Now, Dinah, tell me the truth. Did you ever eat a bear? When suddenly, thump, thump, oh! down she came upon a heap of sticks and dry leaves and the fall was over. Alice was not a bit hurt and she jumped up onto her feet in a moment. She looked up, but it was all dark overhead. Before her was another long passage and the white rabbit was still in sight, hurrying down it. There was not a moment to be lost. Away went Alice like the wind. Just in time to hear it say as it turned a corner, oh my ears and whiskers, how late it's getting. She was close behind it when she turned the corner, but the rabbit was no longer to be seen. She found herself in a long, low, Hall, which was lit up by a row of lamps hanging from the roof. There were doors all around the hall, but they were all locked. And when Alice had been all the way down one side and up the other, trying every door, she walked sadly down the middle, wondering how she was ever to get out again. Suddenly, she came upon a three-legged table, all made of solid glass. Now, there was nothing on it except a tiny golden key. And Alice's first thought was that it might belong to one of the doors of the hall. But alas, either the locks were too large or the key was too small. But at any rate, it would not open any of them. However, on the second time round, she came upon a low curtain she had not noticed before and behind it was a little door about me, 15 inches high. She tried the little golden key in the lock and to her great delight, it fitted. <laughs> Alice opened the door and found that it led into a small passage, not much larger than a rat hole. She knelt down and looked along the passage into the loveliest garden you ever saw. How she longed to get out of that dark hole and wander about among those beds of bright flowers and those cool fountains, but she could not even get ahead through the doorway. And even if my head would go through, thought poor Alice, it would be of very little use without my shoulders. Oh, how I wish I could just shut up like a telescope. I think I could if I only knew how to begin. For you see, so many out of the way things had happened lately that Alice had begun to think that very few things indeed were really impossible. Ha uh ha, -huh. impossible, a very fake misstatement. Just the very word impossible. I am possible. Nothing is impossible, my friends. So don't limit yourself. And it doesn't seem like Alice is limiting this. She's a smart little girl. We can learn from her. There seemed to be no use in waiting by the little door. So she went back to the table, half hoping she might find another key on it, or at any rate, a book of rules for shutting people up like telescopes. This time, she found a little bottle on it, which certainly was not here before, said Alice. And round the neck of the bottle was a paper label with the words, drink me, beautifully printed on it in large letters. It was all very well to say, drink me. But the wise little Alice was not going to do that in a hurry. Now, I'll look first, she said, and see whether it's marked poison or not. For she had read several nice little histories about children who had got burnt and eaten up by wild beasts and other unpleasant things, all because they would not remember the simple rules their friends had taught them, such as, hmm, that a red hot poker will burn you if you hold it too long. Mm -hmm. And that if you cut your finger very deeply with the knife, it usually bleeds. And she had never forgotten that if you drink much from a bottle marked poison, it is almost certain to disagree with you sooner or later. However, this bottle was not marked poison. So Alice ventured to taste it and finding it very nice. Ah, it had, in fact, a sort of mixed flavor of cherry tart, custard, pineapple, roast turkey, toffee, and hot butter toast. 
she very soon finished it off. That reminds me of Willy Wonka. You know when they're going into the room and he's like, taste the wallpaper. And someone's like, it tastes like strawberry. It tastes like raspberry. It tastes like banana. And then this one's like, I don't know what this tastes like. It's a snods. He's like, the snodsberry tastes like a snodsberry. And the girl turns, she's like, snodsberry. Who ever heard of snodsberry? And then he goes on about the dreamer's dreamer or something. But this kind of reminds me of that. I kind of think this is like the Willy Wonka, the book of Willy Wonka. But I know that's a different book. That's not the point. Okay, here we go. What a curious feeling, said Alice. I must be shutting up like a telescope. And so it was indeed. She was now only 10 inches high. And her face brightened up at the thought that she was now the right size for going through the little door into that lovely garden. First, however, she waited for a few minutes to see if she was going to shrink any further. She felt a little nervous about this. For it might end, you know, said Alice to herself, in my going out altogether like a candle. I wonder what I should be like then. And she tried to fancy what the flame of a candle is like after the candle is blown out, for she could not remember ever having seen such a thing. Let me just say something. Alice is pretty damn astute, okay? These are some deep thoughts from a child, see? You know, they have it saying, you know, takes a village to raise a child, but it takes a child to raise a village. That's what children do, you know? They kind of help us to raise our vibration because you gotta step up to the plate, so don't talk down to kids. They're just little people, they're just small. It doesn't mean they're stupid. So Alice is very intelligent, she's astute. She's already having this crisis of like, hello, I can go out like a light. What happens then? Did you ever think about that? Yeah, whatever. Let's move. Let's proceed. Mm -mm -mm. After a while, finding that nothing more happened, she decided on going into the garden at once. But alas for poor Alice. When she got to the door, she found that she had forgotten the little golden key. And when she went back to the table for it, mm -hmm, she found she could not possibly reach it. She could see it quite plainly through the glass, and she tried her best to climb up one of the legs of the table, but it was too slippery. And when she had tired herself out with trying, the poor little thing sat down and cried. <laughs> Come, there's no use in crying like that, said Alice to herself rather sharply. I advise you to leave off this minute. She generally gave herself very good advice. Though she very seldom followed it. Don't worry, Alice, I know the feeling. I mean, the best conversations come when you talk to yourself. They actually say it's very healthy to talk to yourself. Do you ever notice you give someone some really like great advice and you sit there and you're like, hey, Stunan, yo idiot, yo asshole. This is exactly what you need for yourself. And it's like, do you follow it? No, maybe you should start following your own advice. All right, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. moving forward. And sometimes she scolded herself so severely as to bring tears into her eyes. And once she remembered trying to box her own ears for having cheated herself in a game of croquet she was playing against herself. But this curious child was very fond of pretending to be two people. What are you, friggin' Sybil? But it's no use now, thought poor Alice, to pretend to be two people. Why, there's hardly enough of me left to make one respectable person. <laughs> Soon her eye fell on a little glass box that was lying under the table. She opened it and found it a very small cake, ooh, on which the words, eat me, were beautifully marked in currants or currants. I think it's currants. Well, I'll eat it, said Alice, and if it makes me grow larger, I can reach the key, and if it makes me grow smaller, I can creep under the door, so either way, <laughs> I'll get into the garden, and I don't care which happens. It's a win-win for Alice. She ate a little bit and said anxiously to herself, which way, which way? Holding her hand on top of her head to feel which way it was growing. And she was quite surprised to find that she remained the same size. To be sure, this generally happens when one eats cake. Not necessarily unless you eat lots of cake, you're not staying the same size. It's gonna go somewhere, but you know what? Eat in moderation like everything else. Life is short. Enjoy life. So eat that piece of cake if you really are craving it. But just don't make it a daily habit. Anyway, balance things out, people. Balance things out. But Alice had got so much into the way of expecting nothing but out of the way things to happen that it seemed quite dull and stupid for life to go on, go on in the common way. So she set to work and very soon finished off the cake. All right. End of chapter one. What have we learned about Alice? Pretty much a badass. 
she's going for the gusto. She's not thinking about things, but she still is discerning. You know what I like about Alice, and I think we could apply it to our home lives, is the fact that Alice hasn't been tainted yet. She's bored. She sees something that kind of stokes her interest, and she's curious, and she goes and follows it. All right, she doesn't have a game plan, but she's going with the flow, and she's accepting what is and not changing stuff. But she's still using her discernment, realizing, like, do I drink this? Is it poisonous? Do I eat this? And, hey, if I just blow out like a candle, what will become of me? I think it's interesting to look at a book from an adult's perspective now, even though it's a child's book, and to think about the layers in this book. You know, I'm going to encourage you, and this is what I do on the podcast. It's very brief. It's the woo-woo part, okay? You can either shut this off now or go down the rabbit hole with me. Grab a journal if you want and think about the things that you'd like to do for yourself and go down a rabbit hole of your dreams. Maybe just write a few things about things that you've thought of, your visions, your hopes, your goals. Hey, listen, life is short. You're not promised tomorrow. So do something about what makes you happy. Or, you know what? You got to pay bills. I get that too. Hello. So do whatever you need to do, but then find the stuff that really brings you joy and maybe do it as a hobby at first. Maybe you're looking to start your own business. Maybe you're looking to, I don't know, do an online company. Maybe you're looking to venture out and travel. I don't know what that is, but I'm going to encourage you right now to see life through a child's eyes with awe and wonder. Before people told you that things were impossible, why did we believe that crap? It's not true. Most of the successful people, they never took no for an answer. No means not right now, not yet, or I got something better for you. So get out of your own way and stop listening to other people's shit and go after your own dreams. Go down your own rabbit hole. Let's use Alice as kind of, you know, a metaphor for our lives. You be Alice. Think about what your dreams and visions were when you were a kid. And maybe now, what's stoking some sort of passion in you? Start making up a list. Maybe just have a journal and start journaling your thoughts and your dreams and your visions. And you know what? Remember, my friends, thoughts do become things. Do you ever have a thought about a friend that you haven't spoken to in a long time and poof, that person texts you out of the blue or poof, they call you and you're like, I was just thinking of you. Hello. Thoughts become things. So... Start thinking the things that you want to manifest in your life. And like Alice, go into them without any expectations. But be open. Of course, you must discern and make good choices. But be open to the possibilities. The possibilities of you. Possibilities of you creating your reality. And knowing that this too, your life, is an adventure in your wonderland. Okay, my friend. So, um, yeah, that was the end of chapter one. If you enjoyed it, great. If you didn't, I don't know what to tell you. Then don't watch the next episode. But that's me, Rosie DeCandia, Jersey Beats the Classics. Until next time, stay blessed, never stressed. And remember, write down your dreams. Start thinking the things that bring you joy. Follow your bliss. Okay, my friends, time for you to go. Shut it off. I'm looking at you. I'm still watching you. Shut it off. I'm just waiting. Shut it off. It's done. It's over. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go. Because at this point, I think you think there's more. And there's not. So, peace. Good day. Goodbye. Whatever.